What's up, Conroe? Welcome to a brand new edition of Nerd Thug Sports. Hanging out here on 104.5, 106.1, the sister stations, and we're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Hanging out here, as always, on Facebook.com backslash Nerd Thug Radio. We are, uh, we're living the dream and we're hanging out here on this, uh, crazy Conroe weekend, you know? Just... It's uh, kind of well, well, it feels like a weekend at this point. Like. Yeah, it's Thursday. Nothing, nothing's it's, happening. That's so weird. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot going on in the sports world, though. Uh, oddly S- enough, even sod- though everything has been counter to the non-existent of anything happening right yeah, now. Yeah, even though actually nothing's happening in the sports world, the NBA is mired in a bunch of controversy about players testing positive and about the use of these tests. Um, uh, all of the Nets players were tested. Uh, Kevin Durant and three others tested positive, but then it came out the whole team was tested even though none of them had symptoms. And then the question started going around, uh, why are you wasting tests on people? And so the owner of the Nets had to explain that it's okay. He used a private lab. He didn't take resources away from anyone else. It's okay, guys. It's mm-hmm. all right. Um, people were shocked that the rich had access to better health care than the poor. I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't get yeah, I don't know. And also, like, no one had symptoms, but you tested positive on three players. This is a dormant virus. This is something that if you don't get tested, you could easily spread to the other players in your team, making it more dangerous. So, Right. Let's be very clear. If there were enough, everyone in America would get tested. They right. Would literally, if there were enough tests, they would literally have everyone in America come through and get tested. They right. would. They would do that. And you would just get a little text back saying... Yes hey, or no. You've got it. No, you don't. You know. But they would test everyone. Right. And the reason they would test everyone is because this is the long dormancy like you just mentioned. But also just the weird rippling effects of this. If we could somehow contain it, that'd be great. And if we can't, then we're going to have a problem. Exactly. So, um, That's why the country is basically shut down. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just been a just it, obviously it's dominated the news, but this is a sports show. So we're going to try and look at this from a sports angle. Uh, the NFL made an interesting decision. Uh, actually, uh, according to reports and leaked reports, Donald Trump actually called the NFL and begged them not to cancel or push anything back because there had just been so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the NFL went ahead and approved the CBA and went ahead with, as scheduled, the NFL free agency. There were some people who didn't like the optics of it, the idea that a bunch of guys are signing $100 million contracts while some people are losing their jobs and going out of work. But the reality is... There's nothing you can do about that. Well, but sports is always that way. Sports right. is always... Yeah, people none are, of the, people once are these guys always make it lose. to sports, they never are normal again. Right. One, they're never normal again. And two, this would have happened anyway. There's tons of people every day that lose their jobs or something happens to them, and people are still in sports signing hundreds of millions of their contracts. Right. So That's you, just the reality of the situation. You're not wrong. There are people who are going home every Friday unemployed. Right. Turn on the radio and then they hear, A-Rod just did this or so-and-so signed for this. And you're like, ugh. But no, you're right. Somebody's always going through it. So just for right now, it's... Just a lot more people. All of us, apparently. Um, Yeah, so I think it's an interesting interesting week. And it's NFL dominated. And um, first of all, one of my crazy predictions was spot on. Tom Brady... Allegedly what happened, according to some sources, is he had kind of made up his mind to come back to the Patriots, but he was going to ask for a bit of money, and he was going to ask them to get some help. Well, the Patriots coming into this offseason only had about $30 million in free cap space, but they've already made agreements for re-signings and extensions with about four or five players that left them with about $6 million in wiggle room before they even got to Tom Brady. So that's... Problem A, but he didn't address that. The other issue is he saw DeAndre Hopkins get traded to the uh, from the Texans to the Cardinals, and he saw Stephon Diggs get traded from Minnesota to Buffalo, and these are two guys who basically are getting fresh starts. And suddenly he realized, no, I think I want my fresh start. And so he'd already had a meeting with uh, Robert Kraft scheduled. He went ahead and texted him and moved the meeting up and said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. This is it for me, Chief. Now, this happens after Tennessee goes ahead and signs Ryan Tannehill to $114 million or something along those lines. Some ridiculous amount of money. Um, Ryan Tannehill, who everyone was expected to be the cheap alternative to Tom Brady, is Somehow. not cheap. He is not cheap. You're talking about 25 plus a year. Nothing cheap about that. Nope. Nope. Um, everyone thought, oh, well, Ryan Tannehill, he's already gotten a lot of money from Miami. So more than likely, he'd be willing to take a little bit of a discount to be the starter in Tennessee. No, 
No, he said, I am the starter and I am worth the money. And Tennessee agreed. And they then uh, franchised uh, Henry, the running back, uh, which I'm sure the running back's not happy about that. However, when you're talking about franchise money, it's guaranteed for the season. So, sure. I mean, it's Take it. it's 14 or $20 million, whatever the average. They haven't announced what the tag number is going to be for the running backs yet. The new CBA is still kind of being mathed out. So... Like he's he's it's a lot of money he's gonna get this year. Um Tom Brady leaving has a lot of issues though for the Patriots. There was gonna be about twenty five million in dead cap space if from Tom left. Brady's deals. Mm-hmm. Uh it turns out that either way it was gonna happen that way. Even if he stayed, it was just dead cap that because they've extended stuff so many times and his contract technically ended last season. He ended last season. He was not under contract with the Patriots this whole offseason. So Technically, this was already dead cap money mm. um, that they couldn't do anything about anyway, and it's about twenty five or thirty million. So that's they're already just hamstrung. But that comes from year after year after year of Brady just pushing stuff and pushing stuff and pushing stuff and pushing stuff and agreeing to this and taking these pay cuts and blah 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 blah. This is what happens. Eventually, you got to pay. Eventually, you have to pay and account for that money. Eventually, you have to pay the piper. <laughs> Ooh, the piper comes a call in. So, um, so where do you, so you don't follow sports, so you have no idea. Never. Where do you think Tom Brady went? I have absolutely no clue. No idea. You want no. to take a guess? So mm. Tennessee wound up not being right. Right. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, it it went somewhere where I literally I was surprised by this. I don't think, I think I don't think this is a good choice at all. Uh, Tampa Bay. Really, they got rid of the blind man. Uh, the kid, Jameis Winston, is is uh is done. He sounds like a pirate. He does. Um, I I need to make sure that I'm not referencing the wrong. Or no, yeah, that's right, Jameis Winston. I keep thinking about uh Jamarcus Russell, former uh, quarterback of the Raiders, who was the worst number one overall pick ever. Uh, Jameis Winston though is now gone from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Tom Brady is in. All right. Um, it's an upgrade, and it doesn't cost them a lot of money. Uh, there's a lot of other weird stuff that's happened here. Nick Foles uh, traded Tampa Bay. Yeah, what do you think of that? That's a weird choice. I guess considering that their quarterback was blind and they still didn't do like the worst in the league, maybe they can do something. I don't know. Well, they've got good. Okay, so the thing they talk about is that they have good receivers. That's the thing they talk about. They say, yeah. oh, their receivers are really good. Yeah, I mean, considering that a blind man could complete like seven passes in a game is pretty impressive. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, he was 50, 50, but that was probably 99% his fault. <laughs> like, it had nothing to do with the receivers. It's literally because he had no death perception. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So the bears traded for Nick Foles from Philly for a fourth round pick. He's going to push Mitch, uh, Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. They're going to have a competition for the job. Here's my problem. Mitch Trubisky is not that good. Mitchell Trubisky is garbage, but he has a he, he has a tendency to look good. He's athletic. He throws a, a mean pass. I'm sure in practice when he's not scrambling, like I'm sure it's not. I'm sure he looks like a professional quarterback. Yeah. The other problem is is Nick Foles, other than his little small window magical runs with the Eagles, he has a very long career. Where as a starter, he's sub 500. So both of these ba- both of these options are bad. Right. I mean, they didn't like not like they lost a ton by trading for him either. No, I mean they didn't give up a ton. To, but it, but if your two options coming in are the guy who's not been good for you at all, and a oh, guy who over his career hasn't been very good. Ooh, amazing! Like options. how excited are you when one of them wins the job? <laughs> you can either have guy who hasn't been doing well or guy that has been doing not well. <laughs> right. Yay? Woo? Like, if I'm a receiver in Chicago uh-huh. and this quarterback battle is going on, they're like, mm, I don't know, Mitch looked good today. And then the guy's like, man, Nick Nick had a really good practice yesterday. He ran a really good, uh, really good drive with the first team. In the back of my head, I'm going, who cares? <laughs> who cares? The last thing I am is excited about the idea of Mitchell Trubisky or Nick Foles being my starter. Right. Now, Nick Foles does have the Super Bowl ring. He does. There's no getting around that. Uh, and with that comes a lot of respect in the league and a lot of acknowledgement of your accomplishment. But there was a time before he came to Philly that Nick Foles was 
very certain he was about to retire. Yeah, I do recall that time. The Philadelphia had to call him and be like, hey, seriously, come back and, and play for us, blah, blah, blah. And then he won the Super Bowl. And listen, works out, looks great. But he's still Nick Foles. <laughs> like, he had a moment. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, um, sports is about moments. Yeah. Oh, I said he was, it was from Philly. It was from Jacksonville. I apologize. He's, he got signed to Jacksonville last year. That's right. They gave him the four years, 90-whatever, 35 guaranteed, blah, blah, blah. Um, how much time we got here? You got to do the ads? All right, let's go ahead and do these. Go ahead and tell us about uh, our friend Donald Williams and our friend The Adventure Begins, comics, games, and more. Donald Williams with Sean Myers Insurance. Uh, wants you to know that they can shop over 15 national carriers to find the best coverage at the best price, specializing in home as well as bundling with auto to maximize discounts. They're a family. They want you to know that they're getting the best policy for you. They're going to go with you line by line, making sure you're getting all the stuff you do need, getting rid of the stuff you don't so you can save the most amount of money. Give them a call at 936-760-5963. That is 936-760-5963. Donald Williams with Sean Myers Insurance. Yes. Uh, and actually, you know, one thing we want to really remind everybody right now is with everything going on, support Conroe, support local. He's a local kid. He's a good guy. Just give him the opportunity. Listen, the worst thing that happens is you call him, you spend 10 minutes dealing with him today or tomorrow, and you find out, okay, he can't save me money. That's fine. Okay. But what if you find out he can? What right. if he saves you $30? What if he saves you $60? What if he saves you $200 a month? You never know. Right. So if, you, if you're if you not competitively shopping your insurance, you should be doing that every few months anyway. So give them a call and give them an opportunity to earn your business. Mm-hmm. And then our other sponsor, everyone's favorite, The Adventure Begins, Comics, Games, and more. They still got events coming up. They're not That's closed. Right. Conroe Businesses, make sure you support them. These are these are the people in your community. These are the people hiring the people that live next door to you or you yourself. So let's let's support them and keep it going. March 20 through the 22nd is their Backstock Comic Sale. This is huge discounts on major publishers, Marvel, DC, Boom, Dynamite, IDW, tons of publishers, anywhere from 50 to up to 75% off. Huge sales if you're you know, looking for some books. This is a great time to come on down, ask the staff for any questions. Uh, and then today, tonight, is the Writers Club for The Adventure Begins. Oh, that's always fun. Yeah, so they got prompts. If you're coming in, if you want someone to look over some stuff, some peer reviews, this is a great way to come do. Uh, March 21st is the Theros Beyond Death Booster Draft. Only $12 this time. Uh, it starts at 2 p.m., uh, entry fee is twelve. First place gets twenty four dollars in store credit. Second gets eighteen, and third gets twelve. And then everyone who places gets a promo pack. All right. So they still got events going down. These people are still open. They're still here for your entertainment. Yeah, they want to hang out. They want to have a good time. They want you to come enjoy yourselves. They're, they're being safe. They're being mindful. They're being conscientious. They're clean. They're washing their hands. The adventure begins. Comics, games, and more. Right there on fourteen eighty eight. Please go by. Check them out. Support local Conroe business. We're going to jump out to a break. When we come back, we got more Nerd Thug Sports coming your way. Hey, everybody. I'd like to introduce Tiger Rock Martial Arts. With four great locations that are open to all members, Tiger Rock offers world-class training with top-level instructors teaching self-defense and jiu-jitsu, among other courses. Designed to help improve physical fitness and raise confidence, Tiger Rock's martial arts is able to start working with anyone four years old and up to show them the life skills and focus it takes to succeed in the modern world. Anyone interested in a fun, energetic way to make a positive life change should absolutely reach out to Tiger Rock Martial Arts and get started changing their life for the better. TigerRockMartialArts.com The Adventure Begins Comics, Games, and More is open on 1488 at 525 Woodland Square Boulevard. With comics, games, and everything nerd-related, The Adventure Begins is the one-stop nerd shop. On Saturdays, they alternate between having Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, and coming up, they also have cosplay crafting and trivia nights and BYOB nights. They're currently offering a 10% discount for limited time, which will be valid for as long as you grab your books every month. This is Rudy Tomjanovich, and welcome to Nerd Thug Radio. What's up, Conroe? Welcome back to Nerd Thug Sports, hanging out here on 104.5, 106.1, the sister stations. We're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com, and we're hanging out here on this Thursday afternoon in the middle of the super long weekend in Conroe. Uh, Right. 
It's it's just kind of a weird vibe out there, but everybody, I hope everyone's taking care of themselves and washing hands and staying clean and being safe and all that fun stuff. Um, but let's get into some sports here. Yeah, sports. Um, so the Cleveland Browns have yet again won the off season. Good for them. Which worked out last year to what, like five wins, four wins. Ooh. Um, Somehow didn't make it past the, their their best season yet. Tied. Yeah. Uh, so they signed already Jack Conklin to be their new right tackle. They brought in tight end Austin Hooper and in a, in a typical Browns move, they signed the one guy who I felt like would be, who should be unemployed. And for some reason has never been unemployed. Case Keenum. Case Keenum remains strong. Case yeah. Keenum got a great, our very own Houston's very own worst quarterback. Of Case all Keenum, all time. He's done nothing good his entire career. That is a fact. Look it up. He maybe's won six games over like twelve years. Three years. Well, before the Minnesota year, the Minnesota year was his one good year. The Minnesota year got him a Denver year, and the right. Denver year was bad. Denver year he got benched. The following year they bring in Joe Flacco. Uh, he was the backup somewhere else, and now he's the backup to the Browns. Woo. It's a three-year, eighteen million with ten million guaranteed. Case Keenum's agent must be the greatest agent on the planet. Can I tell you what I can I tell you what I wrote in my group chat with my boys? Hmm. Case Keenum's agent deserves a lifetime achievement award and fifty percent of Case's earnings. Correct, like <laughs> accurate. <laughs> this guy has had like the best year. I want to be paid. Ten guaranteed ten million dollars to back up the Browns. Well, no, because you're gonna have to play. The really who you want to back up is somebody like Drew Brees or like Tom Brady because they don't typically know. don't miss games. I mean, yeah, usually, but I mean, like, it's not like what's his name missed a ton of games. Baker Mayfield. No, yeah. that's fair. But the Browns are just so bad that you'll have to play. Maybe it'll be the day you're hungover and like you haven't looked at a playbook in three weeks. And like then, like Baker Mayfield gets maybe, the flu that week. And, maybe and what like, I like, you're in. What I like to think. What? <laughs> what I like to think is that Case Keenum thinks he's really good. Like oh, in no, his well, mind, he, Case Keenum is the best quarterback that ever lived. He has to. I mean, there's no reason. There's no way he doesn't because he has undeniable super fans for no. It's like a cult. Well, it's the U of H guys, and so that was the thing when he played here in Houston for two and a half seasons. He was. Terrible. He was awful. He was terrible. The worst. Uh, I think it was zero wins in the first 18 games. He was like 0 for 14 or something like that, 0 for 16, and still was getting fans. Ad- they were like, it's not his fault. The team just is terrible. And it's like, well, their quarterback's a pretty key part of that problem. Um, and he was bad. They were running like seven bubble screens a game because he can only throw certain plays because he's not that good of a quarterback. Wow. Um, he was he was awful, and it was terrible to watch, and Andre Johnson was killing himself to just make him look good. He had one game where he threw, like, three touchdowns all to Andre Johnson, all, like, like in key moments, and someone was like, Case Keenum is so clutch. And it was like, I think it was his the game he actually won, and it was like, okay, but try to remember that he's now, like, 1-16. in 16. Right. <laughs> like, Let's talk about how he's the worst record ever. Right. And so, I don't, man, it's just been a career. Took him just, over a season to get, like, a win. And it's just been this weird career where he's just been. He's bounced around, had one good year, and got him another year, and then he got it somewhere else as another backup. Yeah, because really in Minnesota, I'm not even sure he should have been on the roster, but somehow he was, like, on the roster as the third quarterback. And then Sam Bradford goes out, and someone else gets hurt, and so then it's. It has to be him. Yeah. You know, some um, real Mark Sanchez, like, I'm going to show up somewhere after, like, the third guy breaks his leg. Right. Poor Mark Sanchez. But Mark Sanchez looks so unprepared. But in Minnesota, Case Keenum Yeah, because he was, like, the eighth string quarterback. Yeah. Someone <laughs> called him up from his couch and was like, yo, you think you could throw a pig? And he was like, probably. <laughs> you think you could throw a pig? Yeah. I hope that's how they do those calls now. <laughs> I hope that's how all those calls do. Vince Young sitting at home. I hope he's waiting on his call to throw a pig. I hope that's how they all say it. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, but yeah, he did go out there and he won. I think it was seven and I think he went like seven and two or something as the Minnesota starter. Woo. They go to the playoffs. Uh, I think he wins the first game and then the second game. It's against this. Uh, it's uh, he just looks like Case Keenum. It's bad. Right. He, he's 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 typical Case Keenum. Turnovers. Unprepared, scrambling, struggling. And then he loses. And they lose. 
And so yeah, he was he on beat, he was he was on the heat. He was he was coming yeah, in. Minnesota beat the Saints, and then in the conference game they lost. And, Good for them. And so then he goes to Denver. He takes some money. Minnesota lets all three quarterbacks go: Teddy Bridgewater, Sam Bradford. And, uh, Teddy Bridgewater's doing good for himself. He has. so, But Teddy Bridgewater's the one whose knee like exploded. Right. And he finally came back. He played like two games uh, before they went to Case Keenum, I think. And so Sam Bradford, I uh, believe, was done at that point. Uh, Case Keenum goes to Denver, and Teddy Bridgewater goes to New Orleans, where he sat there for two years. Uh, Keenum, he might have just been a two-year deal. And so the second year, he's just on the roster in Denver. Um, but he, he was bad. He was bad in Denver. And so now he's uh, the backup in Cleveland where he Woo. can be bad some more. <laughs> Here's a weird thing. This is this is super intriguing to me. Someone else who has an amazing agent. I hope it's the same guy and he's just really great at his job. He's just the best. I'm going to tell you a name that you've never heard before. All right. Chase Daniel. Ooh, never heard of him. Sounds like a fake person. 33 years old. He's extended an incredible and unique career uh, as a quarterback who never wants his com- Competed to start, but has played well enough when called upon to merit more than a decade as a backup. Wow, that guy's literally had it made. He's been in the league 10 NFL seasons. He's had five starts and thrown seven touchdowns. <laughs> That's an amazing rate. And uh, so he just finished two years with the Bears, where he started with he started with the Saints, and he's also been on the Chiefs and the Eagles. Okay? What the heck? What so, is this guy? So like, in the Saints, for a minute, like, Think about it. Drew Brees was like 34 at the time, and they were like, oh, we might have to go to Chase Daniel after when Drew Brees is done, and Drew Brees has just never been done. <laughs> right. He so was Chase like... Daniel, behind Drew Brees, was like, they were like, he could be the guy, and he would look good in preseason, and, oh, okay, maybe. Well, so then he goes to the Chiefs, and it just never, he never can win the job. And then he goes to the Eagles, and at that point, it's been six or seven years, so he's probably a backup, but it's whatever. And then... <laughs> Now he's been with the Bears for two years, and he wasn't better than Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> but for whatever reason, he just signed a three-year deal with the imaginary team, the Detroit Lions. See? Fake person, fake team, fake career. This guy doesn't exist. And I'm coming at you. would max out at $13.5 million. If he makes the final roster, Daniel probably will surpass $40 million in career earnings this year. What an... For- for five starts and seven touchdown passes. What an absolute dream. Like, this is a guy who has, like, been told he has potential his entire life, and it's just been riding that forever. <laughs> and at this point, ten years in, it's no longer about potential. They just literally are going, if our guy goes down, you're good enough to carry it. But it's not based on anything. <laughs> Zero results. Seven touchdowns in five games, first of all, isn't a great that's not. I mean, was that one point two a game? Like, yeah. I mean, it's not the it's crushing not, it, right? Not the greatest ever. Yeah. Uh, but also, if we're talking about like starts, five, yeah, five in ten years, seven touchdowns, ten years. He must be great, like in the room, because they have quarterbacks meetings, you know, every week for oh, three, he, two he, or three he, days. He, I bet you this is the equivalent of me in sports. <laughs> like just a guy that people are like, oh yeah, I like that guy, and they're like, should we bring him? And he's like, yeah, I talked to him one time. Yeah, he, he knows yeah, he can doing. come. He knows what he's doing. I I have to believe that he's at least like when they get in the room and they're breaking stuff down. Like he's either really smart or yeah. super charming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be one or the other. But right. He's either like every quarterback's best friend. So when they bring a quarterback in, and he's like, hey, you know, Chase is a really good voice to have in the locker. And they're like, really? And he's like, yeah, you really should give him a look. And they're like, Chase Daniel. And they're like, yeah, honestly. Really? Okay. Well, then they look at their, his career, and they're like, you know what? He's really not that bad. I mean, not a lot of ugly games. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, one thing about the NFL, if you just never get exposed – yeah, if no one ever good. tells you, if no one ever finds out you're bad, somehow Case Keenum has been bad and no one's found out he's bad yet. Yeah, that part I don't understand. Because he's been completely exposed and it doesn't stop anyone from still giving him money. I think just the fact that he gets starts. <laughs> They're just like, we got, he's got starts. Right. And it's like, yeah, but he's, he's like, oh, in like 75. And they're like, but he got, he got like 75 starts though. And right. It's like. Yeah, he, he lost all enough, of them. <laughs> he was good enough to start 75 games for these other bad teams, and we're a bad team. So he can <laughs> definitely start here. And it's like, there's just the one guy that hates Case Keenum. There's just you, yeah, and you're just, just like, I, 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 hate, I hate everyone. I, don't, like, I almost feel like I have to be his arch nemesis at this point. <laughs> Case Keenum, what are you going to do with him? Um, 
And so Case Keenum and Chase Daniels, I hope they have the same agent. His job is just getting these two guys listen, hired everywhere. Ten percent of everything these guys have made is is an is an f ton of money. This guy is loaded. Yeah, this guy is happily rich. If all he does is get Chase Daniel and Case Keenum jobs, the guy is loaded. Yeah, this is this is like, and this is the agent nobody knows because it's on two bad quarterbacks. Right, one who has like five games, and the other one who has a million games, but somehow still ever terrible. Five wins, maybe. <laughs> right, <laughs> he's counting five wins over like an eighty-game career, and he somehow still gets everywhere. Yeah, but if I'm getting because he walks into, he, he walks into the room and he goes, "You definitely want Case Keenum." Yeah, like well, he's gotta be just well, listen. Ten percent of eighteen million is one point eight million dollars. Right. I'm, if I'm if I'm good at my job and I get you eighteen. And I get 1.8. I don't care how terrible you are. Guaranteed 10. Guaranteed 10. So that's a million dollars for sure for the for the agent. Oh, 10%. Brutal. brutal. Boom. And then you turn around and you get the other guy, $40 million over 10 years. So that's $4 million bucks in the bank over the last 10 years just helping this worthless guy get jobs. He just back alleys his way through everything because he literally <laughs> never starts. He just has naked pictures of the same three guys and he just changes the faces <laughs> on them. He's like, this is you. And they're like, I don't remember doing that, but maybe. <laughs> I'll sign him. <laughs> like, the secret agent of Case Keenum and Chase Daniels. Yeah. Arch nemesis to the NFL. Scorn of all quarterback backups. I I just don't. And starters. <laughs> prolific, prolific. Prolific. Prolific backup. What a prolific backup. Um, And then we'll do one more like snippet here. How much time we got? Uh, we got like three minutes. So Dak Prescott and the Cowboys uh, oh, yeah. had their conversations. Couldn't agree on a deal. Again. So they uh, franchised him. So he just got, I think it's going to be $35 million as the franchise tag number. Oh, or that's $30 million. That's pretty good. $30 million to not come to a deal. I had, I had to do something. I think it was really funny that he just did He was like, I'm just not going to do one. And then they didn't get Jack. Well... But he he still came in right in the number he was talking about the whole time. I guess. Like, he hasn't lost a dollar in any of this. Because you're right. There was a time going into last season where he looked good the first three or four games. I think they went 6-0 and or 5-0, and and he was he was, like, he was on fire. He was looking great. And suddenly it was like, they're going to have to pay this guy who knows what. Yeah, they're going to have to pay this guy big money. But he was only wanting between 35 and 40 to 42 anyway a year. Right. But he wanted multiple years. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Well, here's thirty to thirty-five for one year. Next year, you get if they just franchise them again next year. It, it's a, it's, I think it's a hundred and ten or hundred and fifteen percent. So it has to be right in that thirty-five to forty range that he's going to get. So over the next two years, he'll get eighty million dollars guaranteed. Is he, is he mad about that? No, no. He's he's thrilled. Plus, he still gets to sign a contract after that. If they want to. <laughs> well, someone else will give it to him. That's the, Okay, so here's the problem. At that point, he'll be 28, the starter for the Dallas Cowboys for six years, and he will have earned a lot of money. 74, 78, somewhere in that range, million dollars. And it doesn't even matter if they never won the playoff game. It doesn't matter because he has one playoff win, which is more than like two-thirds of the league at quarterback. Mm-hmm. So he'll be 28 and a free agent. The amount that's never happened to the NFL. The amount of money that a team will throw at him to come to them will be unheard of. This was almost the Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins was 29, didn't have a good career in Washington, but he finished the last two years okay, but both off of franchises. So he turns around and he gets three years and $80 million guaranteed from Minnesota, who, by the way, just extended him two more years for another 60 some odd million it totals out he's going to make 150 million over 5 years with Minnesota. Right. So, do you think Dak Prescott feels bad about this? No, no, no. I almost feel like this was like I asked for 8 or I asked for 40, I get 30, but now I'm on my path to get 200 in 2 years. Right. And it's like yeah, it worked out. Yeah. It worked out just fine for him. Yeah, it looked really bad at the end of the year, but it because, does. But like, as long as as long as he doesn't agree to a deal and they have to franchise him, now this is his number. Right. He yeah. like forces his way in. Yeah. 
So uh, he wins either way. He wins either way. Good was, for him. It I was guess. kind of a strong position that he had. Better than better than Aaron Rodgers, though. Should have been in the Pro Bowl. I'm just saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the best quarterback ever. Yeah, right. I I, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how they wrap their brains around that. Um, sometimes ESPN just falls in love with people, and they're just ride or die till the end. It's just funny. The other guy had like a 13 like win season. Yeah, with, like a new head coach. <laughs> right. 13 wins under a rookie head coach, and they were like, "Yeah, but Dak is better." Right. Sure, sure he is. With his sure 500 is. team. Yeah. <laughs> sure he is. Best running back in the game. <laughs> yeah. You only want to have your games with a great team around you. Uh, as we're jumping out to a break here, I want to tell you guys about the mobile mechanic road service and repair. Getting you back on the road with a smile. 281-670-5822. 281-670-5822. He also services big rigs and motorcycles. Anthony Rowe is awesome. He can do everything from computer diagnostics, engine lights, fix-a-flat, battery change, Lockout, oil change, brakes, towing, service repairs, just everything. And he's a great guy to be around. We spent, we spent some time together while he was fixing my car. Swapped out the alternator, which on my Dodge Avenger was in like the most just awkward and terrible places. Uh, got it done in less than an hour. Uh, great guy to be around. Hard worker. Uh, fair dude. Good pricing. Definitely somebody you want to support. Somebody you should want to work with. Uh, contact 281-670-5822, the mobile mechanic. He'll come to you and fix your problems. All right, we'll be right back with more Nerd Thug Sports in just a minute. The Adventure Begins Comics, Games, and More is open on 1488 at 525 Woodland Square Boulevard. With comics, games, and everything nerd-related, The Adventure Begins is the one-stop nerd shop. On Saturdays, they alternate between having Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, and coming up, they also have cosplay crafting and trivia nights and BYOB nights. They're currently offering a 10% discount for limited time, which will be valid for as long as you grab your books every month. Hey everybody, I'd like to introduce Tiger Rock Martial Arts. With four great locations that are open to all members, Tiger Rock offers world-class training with top-level instructors teaching self-defense and jiu-jitsu, among other courses. Designed to help improve physical fitness and raise confidence, Tiger Rock's martial arts is able to start working with anyone four years old and up to show them the life skills and focus it takes to succeed in the modern world. Anyone interested in a fun, energetic way to make a positive life change should absolutely reach out to Tiger Rock Martial Arts and get started changing their life for the better. TigerRockMartialArts.com From chicken fried steak with jalapeno cream gravy to spicy shrimp tacos or a double bone-in pork chop, there are many items listed on the menu of the Woodlands area's newest restaurant and lounge. With two full bars, 40 beers on tap, 23 wines by the glass, and a large, family-friendly patio, Citizen's Grill is designed to create a fun atmosphere. Interested in hungry parties can find them on FM 1488 at Old Conroe Road across from the Escape Theater and Dell Webb. Open weekdays 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and weekends 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And interested parties should absolutely check out the Nerd Thug Radio events pages for specials. Hi, Conroe. Corey DLG of Nerd Thug Radio. For people interested in saving money on car and home insurance, they should contact Sean Myers Insurance Services. If you look on Google, you'll see plenty of five-star reviews for these guys. They're great. They're an independent agent able to shop over 15 national carriers to find the best coverage at the best price for that customer. They do specialize in home insurance as well as bundling with auto to maximize discounts. They would want you to know that they consider their customers family and that their policy is caring and, and their goal is to bring value by going through your coverage line by line to make sure you actually understand what you have. The interested party should call 936-760-5963 if they're interested in saving money on car insurance today. Hi, this is Kevin Smith, former Dallas Cowboy, Texas A&M Aggie as well. And I want to say what's up to Nerd Thug Radio. Welcome back, Conroe, to Nerd Thug Sports. Hanging out here on 104.5 and 106.1, the sister stations. And we're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Hanging out here on this Thursday afternoon. Just doing the sporty sport thing as we're driving around to places we're not supposed to go to. Well, you can still drive. Yeah, you're just not supposed to go anywhere. Yeah. Right. You can drive. Yeah, no one's going to stop you. Drive all day long, wherever you want. This is like, this just is like, don't get out of the car. This is like a hurricane, but like, not like a natural disaster. Right. Right. Because you're safe at home this time. Yeah. Right. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird, it's, it's a weird vibe, though. Um, the vibes. Right. So we've come to the T segment Ooh. of the Nerd Thug Sports. Sports T is always the best. Sports T is always the best. 
And I've got a weird take here. All right, so, so stay with a, me here. We need an energy drink called sports tea. Sports tea. It's spicy. Um, so DeAndre Hopkins was traded from the Texans to the Arizona Cardinals. The worst deal ever. It's not a great deal. We got David Johnson and a second round pick back. We're giving them a fourth rounder this year, and we get a fourth rounder next year. It's, yeah, but we trade probably one of the best receivers in the entire league. Ye correct. Now, um, we'll do it this way. I'll get into the issues first, and then we'll kind of come back, and I'll I'll say how I feel about the trade. Fair enough. So allegedly, Michael. Ir- so not allegedly, this really did happen. Michael Irvin went on his show and just did DeAndre Hopkins wrong. And literally verbatim explained DeAndre Hopkins' conversation that they privately had. DeAndre Hopkins has since come forward and said things are blown out of proportion, but not that he was misquoted. So, essentially the spirit of what Michael Irvin said is correct. Now how we're all reacting to it apparently is what DeAndre Hopkins is saying is not a big deal. Um, Basically... De- Bill O'Brien feels felt threatened by DeAndre Hopkins' presence in the locker room. He had too much influence in the locker room. So Bill O'Brien uh, wanted to hash it out with him. First thing he does when he calls him into the meeting, though, is he starts the meeting off with, the last time I had to have one of these meetings, it was with Aaron Hernandez. Oh, God. Yeah, not a good compliment. No. Not a good way to start a conversation. I want to point out DeAndre Hopkins has never had any sort of criminal issues, has never been in any kind of real trouble. There's nothing that's been reported that he's even anything other than an upstanding citizen. So this is already an odd way to start the conversation. Yeah, I'd go as far as to say really bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm fine with that. Um, goes on to say that Bill O'Brien doesn't. So DeAndre Hopkins, apparently he, he has a couple baby mamas. Uh, he has children from different women, apparently. And Bill O'Brien has gone, uh, went so far as to say during the conversation that he doesn't like that DeAndre Hopkins brings the various women around the facility. Um, I don't have an issue with that. I don't, I don't think that that's – I think it's okay for the coach, especially one who's in a, such a strong position like Bill O'Brien is, to say who's allowed in and out. I don't think that's wrong. Bill Belichick told Tom Brady, you can't bring your fake doctor around anymore. It's a bad influence on the locker room. So – I don't have a problem with the head coach asserting that kind of authority. Mm -hmm. Uh, A player doesn't tell the organization who is and isn't allowed. The organization tells the player. Right. Now, listen, if the player goes, hey, uh, my kids want to come through on Tuesday. If you clear in advance, I don't see an issue with that. Right. Yeah, that's not a big deal. But if Tuesday's a work day and we got a lot of stuff going on, I don't really want your kids around. Then I'm going to say, hey, man, we got a lot of stuff going on Tuesday. Why don't you keep the kids at home? Just hang out with them Monday. Like. You will give them a tour, bring them on Monday afternoon, we'll do a tour, give them some ball caps, whole bit. But Tuesday's a work day. Like, there's ways to handle that. Right, yeah. Um, so apparently they got into it pretty rough, and by the end of it, they hadn't settled anything. Um, so the trade went through a couple days later. Uh, now, Hopkins' people had already reached out to the Texans, though, and said he was expecting about a $5 million a year pay bump and wasn't going to be coming into camp unless he got it. Okay. So the Texans were already in a position where they knew pay him or dump him. Mm-hmm. So they dumped him. Uh, a lot of people were mad at Bill O'Brien that like they're tired of him getting rid of good players because he can't get along with them. I do think that's a problem. I think yeah, the I'd... Jadavion Clowney thing was poorly handled. Yes. And I, I would rather keep DeAndre Hopkins than trade him. For sure. Yeah, I think... You know, there's there's an important part of leadership where you work with people and unless they're truly like against the rest of the team or something bad is going to happen, you know, someone like Aaron Hernandez who right. turned out to be a murderer. Right. Um like there's certain things that like in a culture you're trying to like thing but like not getting along with someone, not agreeing with someone's quote unquote work ethic in the clowny situation. And then just dumping him and getting nothing back. Yeah, totally handling it wrong. Because if you're going to dump him, you've got to do it before the cutoff date for the franchise tags. Because right. we, we had him franchised. And so what we really should have done is if we couldn't work out a deal with him, then by the June 15th cutoff, he can only play another one-year deal. Which is why we got so little back from Seattle, because they weren't allowed to negotiate a new deal with him. Right. So what we should have done in that instance, if we're going to have the trade, if it's if the trade is going to be the outcome, then you got to do it June 1st. You call right. Clowney up and go, listen, 
We're going to ship you somewhere. We're working on it actively right now. This is what it is. Now, he has to sign, because it was a franchise tag, he has to sign it to be traded. So he has ultimate control anyway. Right. But he's going to negotiate a new deal with the team anyway. So you go, hey, man, how do you feel about Seattle? Seattle's talking. They want to give us blah, blah, blah. Uh, No, I don't want to go there. Okay, all right. So, But, like, it just never, they couldn't, that was what should have happened on the clowny thing. It's not. They traded him late in the offseason. We got a couple picks back. Uh, including a couple players too, but it wasn't anything as much as this. It right. wasn't anything of value. The second round pick is the most we've gotten back for a player, uh, but it's still not a great trade because literally a couple of days later, Minnesota sends Sam Diggs to Buffalo and they get a first and a third and a fifth for it. Right. Um, now there's differences in the two. Sam Diggs was under is under contract. He's got like five years left on a deal. Mm-hmm. And it was a new deal he signed. It's a bunch of money, so he's happy. So going to Buffalo is just a straight transaction. He's under contract for X amount of time. So Buffalo paid more because it's a stable situation. Right. And, uh, like, I understand the different workings behind it, but yeah. I'm just talking about Bill O'Brien's inability to just work with people. No, and I agree with that part. That part is the frustrating part. But here's what's not frustrating. He gets a second rounder for a guy who wants a new deal now when he goes to Arizona. So now Arizona and Hopkins have to work out a new deal. Right. And they're probably going to. They're probably going to tear up the three years left and just give him a new deal. He's got like three years and 38. And I'm sure they're just going to shred it and just do three years and 50 or something, and everyone will be happy. Right. But now they've committed new money and a second round pick for DeAndre Hopkins. So it's going to cost a little bit more for Arizona. That's why they didn't go all the way to a first rounder. I understand that part of it, the economics of the trade value. Yeah. I'm not confused. That makes sense. I don't think he got hurt. He's not hurt. Bill O'Brien was ever going to get value for DeAndre Hopkins, so I don't think he did too bad. The Minnesota Buffalo thing makes it look worse, but the situations are different. Yeah, no. Also, I think in a lot of ways, this trade is good for Bill O'Brien because it goes, listen, this is this is the pitch to the team if I'm Bill O'Brien. Mm-hmm. We weren't going to pay him. He had three years and $40 million left. There was no way we were going to give him more money. They, we've got about 35 or 40 in cap room, and we've got other people we've got to bring in and bring back. We're probably going to lose uh, Redder, our defensive tackle. We're probably going to lose him anyway. So, like, we're already starting to lose people. I can't give more money to him. But if he wants more money, I'm willing to send him somewhere else so they can pay him. And I'll yeah. move on. Right. And to me... That's the most logical thing to do in that situation. You're never going to get value. But also, here's something to remember. Teams that are paying their wide receiver don't win Super Bowls. There are no teams that win a Super Bowl that have a $20 million wide receiver. It's too much resources allocated to one guy who only gets the ball at most 10 or 12 times a game. It's like when you pay... No, it's different because I was going to say it's like when you pay a cornerback a bunch of money, but a cornerback can literally turn a whole half of the field off. Like Richard Sherman can shut down an entire left side of a field. They only throw right the rest of the game. Okay, well then that means with my 10 other guys, I can do a lot of stuff. It makes my defense way better. It's not the same thing on offense for a receiver. Mm -hmm. Even if he's going to catch everything, I can't just throw to him because eventually they know where it's like they're ready. Uh, they're just going to hurt him. Right. Uh, so I do understand the idea of not allocating that much more. Like, that was probably the max in that. Like, we can't give him another $7 million. We can't give him $20 million to be a wide receiver. Right, yeah. It's not going to be. It's not. It's not, it's just not going to be possible. It's not plausible, especially because we have to basically rebuild our team because we're kind of we're, we're getting older. Our defense is kind of falling apart. The defense is old. The offense now without Hopkins. Now we already want it to go get like one more weapon on defense or on offense. Now we need three more weapons, two more weapons. Like it's it's a, uh, we're gonna have to have a really good draft, and we've not. This will be Bill O'Brien's first draft, so this will be deciding or telling, I should say, because we haven't been good drafters. Now, if we go out and we have a draft where all of a sudden six or seven of these guys are contributing, okay, all right. Or I guess four or five are contributing, mm-hmm. great. That's what we need. The problem is 
uh, that's not likely. Most teams don't get that many contributions from young from rookies. But it helps you build a team later on. It does. Well, the the it yeah. So it's an interesting situation, and it's kind of ugly. It's really ugly. Michael yeah. Irvin absolutely betrayed DeAndre Hopkins' confidence there, and just told the whole story. <laughs> just kind of put it out there. What I'm going to do is tell you everything. Eh, that's what? some that's some honesty right there. That is some honesty. It's also the T. Mm. Uh, how much time we got here? Like two minutes. All right. Let me tell you guys about my friends Tiger Rock Martial Arts. With four great locations that are open to all members, Tiger Rock offers world class training with top level instructors teaching self defense and jiu jitsu among other courses. Helping to improve your physical fitness and raise your confidence, Tiger Rock Martial Arts is able to start working with anyone four years old and up and show them the life skills and focus it takes to succeed in the modern world. Anyone seeking a fun, energetic way to make a positive life change needs to reach out to Tiger Rock Martial Arts and get started changing their life for the better today. Uh, stay tuned with us here. we got a little bit more Nerd Thug Sports coming your way. From chicken fried steak with jalapeno cream gravy to spicy shrimp tacos or a double bone-in pork chop, There are many items listed on the menu of the Woodlands area's newest restaurant and lounge. With two full bars, 40 beers on tap, 23 wines by the glass, and a large, family-friendly patio, Citizens Grill is designed to create a fun atmosphere. Interested in hungry parties can find them on FM 1488 at Old Conroe Road across from the Escape Theater and Dell Webb, open weekdays 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and weekends 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And interested parties should absolutely check out the Nerd Thug Radio events pages for specials. Hi, Conroe. Corey DLG of Nerd Thug Radio. For people interested in saving money on car and home insurance, they should contact Sean Myers Insurance Services. If you look on Google, you'll see plenty of five-star reviews for these guys. They're great. They're an independent agent able to shop over 15 national carriers to find the best coverage at the best price for that customer. They do specialize in home insurance as well as bundling with auto to maximize discounts. They would want you to know that they consider their customers family and that their policy is caring and and their goal is to bring value by going through your coverage line by line to make sure you actually understand what you have. The interested party should call 936-760-5963 if they're interested in saving money on car insurance today. Hey, Haywood Jeffries, former Houston Oil wide receiver on Nerd Thug Radio. Welcome back, Conroe, to Nerd Thug Sports right up here on 104.5, 106.1, the sister stations, and we're streaming worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Let me tell you guys about my friends, the Citizens Grill. From chicken fried steak with jalapeno cream gravy to a farmer's garden salad or our amazing fresh baked pecan fudge brownie sundae, it's all amazing at Citizens Grill. To complement your meal, we also feature 30 wines by the glass, 40 draft beers on tap, and two full bars serving all your favorite adult libations, including our Blackberry Whiskey Smash, a customer favorite. With plenty of seating for groups of all sizes, including both family-friendly and adult-only areas, we're a great choice for a special occasion or event. Whether for two on a date night or a large extended family or group of friends, find Citizens Grill on FM 1488 at Old Conroe Road across from the Woodlands Dell Webb neighborhood in Escape Theater. Call 936-320-0022 for information and just make sure they're open and all that. And you can always put, call ahead and place a to-go order, uh, given how things are. But make sure you support Conroe Local and just small business in general. Mm-hmm. All right, before we jump out, uh, yeah, man, it's a crazy free agency week. Like, just all sorts of stuff happening. Sports had to do something. Sports had to do something. Um, some people are saying now that the DeAndre Hopkins trade makes Arizona, like, spicy. Like, uh, Dark Horse... This is a team that could really do some things. I'm going to go ahead and squash that. Uh, yeah, their their head coach is still trash. Yeah, still it's, not great. The guy that got fired from what, Texas Tech or something like that? Yeah, and wasn't even having a good – he was going to be the offensive coordinator at UC. Ooh. <laughs> like, Ooh. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm not buying it. Plus, there's other head coaches that already, like, super hate him. So, like, yeah, there's already just bad – he's already just – He's already got bad air around him. Like he's never, it's never a good sign. No, he's not the guy. He's just uh, not. he's he's not the guy. Uh, their quarterback is new, right? Kyler Murray. He literally two years ago didn't know if he was going to be a baseball or football player, and so now he's a starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. And now people are saying he might win a Super Bowl. No. Uh yeah. Go for it, fam. Uh, yeah. That's fine. 
Um, Remember, Case probably the same people that are like Case Keenum's the greatest quarterback <laughs> of all time. Different people, same mindset. Yeah. Uh, listen, Kyler Murray is talented. He's gifted. Um, yeah. No. Nothing. Nothing. T- nothing taking away from him. And Cliff I'm not Kingsbury saying that Kingsbury probably knows football to an extent. Uh, but just the timing of everything is just off and just wrong. And so uh, I don't see it. Maybe other people do. I don't see it, though. With that... If they win, it's in spite of their head coach. <laughs> yes, 100%. With that, on behalf of Little Brother Nico and myself, on behalf of Tiger Rock uh, Martial Arts, Mobile Mechanics, Citizens Grill, The Adventure Begins, and Don Williams with Sean Myers Insurance... Stay classy, stay clean, stay healthy. Same nerd thug time, same nerd thug channel.